Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike, and today we're going to be installing Proxmox Virtual Environment 7.0. Now, Proxmox is a free, open source, Linux based hypervisor based off of Debian. And personally, I use it over VMware or Hyper V in my own production environment. And that's mostly due to the fact that it doesn't require expensive licensing and it offers a similar feature set to other paid hypervisor software which we'll be going over in other videos. For this tutorial, it's recommended that you have a dedicated machine on which to install Proxmox. You'll also need a USB drive that's at least one gigabyte for the installer. You'll also need Rufus or another similar software to flash the image to the USB drive. So, to get started, we'll just need to download the ISO file from the Proxmox website. I'll link that below. We'll go here. Click on Proxmox VE 7.0 ISO installer download and then we will wait for that download to finish. Alright, our download is complete. Make sure that the USB drive is plugged in and go ahead and launch Rufus. Be sure that the proper device is selected and then go here to select and find the ISO you downloaded open it up we'll leave everything else default for now hit start here it's important that you select write in DD image mode otherwise it will not boot hit OK and then OK again and then we will wait for this to finish installing now that the image has been written go ahead and remove the drive and plug it into the system that you'd like to install Proxmox onto. Alright, we'll go ahead and start up the computer and start tapping Escape since it's an HP Elite Desk. Then we'll go to Boot Menu and select our USB device. Here we'll get the Proxmox splash screen. Go ahead and hit Install Proxmox. We're loaded into the Proxmox installer. Go ahead and click Agree. Here we'll select the drive to install Proxmox 2. We only have the one hard drive, so click Next. Here we'll select our country, time zone, and keyboard layout. I'll change this to Chicago, and then click Next. Give ourselves a strong password. And the email address doesn't have to be valid necessarily it just has to appear to be so we'll change that to dot com click next here we'll give ourselves a fully qualified domain name this will be pve 01h 2 dclab assign ourselves a static IP of 192.168.1.250 Click Next. Here we'll review and make sure that everything looks good. It does. We'll hit Install. It'll begin installing and then after it's done installing it will automatically reboot. I'll get back to you once the installation and the reboot is finished. Once the install is finished and it reboots you should get a screen that looks like this. Now we know the server is running so let's get back to our desktop. Alright, now that we're back at our desktop, go ahead and open up a browser window. Type in https colon slash slash and then the IP address we assigned our Proxmox machine. 192.168.1.250 and then put a colon to designate the port and that will be 8006. Hit enter. So you'll get this window. This just means that we don't have a valid certificate installed yet. You can ignore this warning, go to Advanced, and then Continue. Our username will be root. And then the password we gave the machine in the installation. Login. You'll get this window each time you log in, unless you have a license. 
There's no real need for a license unless you are an enterprise user and you need the support. So we can hit OK and ignore this. Alright, so we're in our Proxmox web interface. This interface can be a bit overwhelming if you're not used to it, so let's take a closer look at what's going on here. In the top left, you'll see a drop-down menu, and in it there are four options. These are the various ways of viewing your Proxmox data center. You can try different views once you're more used to things, but for now we'll be sticking with the default server view that I use most often. Under that, there is the data center tab, which can be used to view the global settings for your data center. Your data center is comprised of what we call nodes. In this case, our node is the machine that we've installed Proxmox onto. If you were to add another node, you would be installing Proxmox to a different machine and then joining it to your data center. If we click on our node, PVE01, and then go to Summary, we'll see a few helpful stats including CPU usage, RAM usage, available disk space, and some helpful graphs. What I'm interested in here is the hard drive space. We've installed Proxmox to a 500 gigabyte drive, but it's only showing that the drive is about 93 gigabytes. Moreover, if we went to create a virtual machine, we wouldn't be able to select a storage device to place it in. Now, Proxmox is normally intended to be installed on a separate drive than the drive or drives that will be used as storage for things like VMs, image files, containers, etc. In our case, we only have the one drive, so we'll need to do some additional configuration before we're able to run pretty much anything besides Proxmox itself. So if we go up to our node and expand the submenu, we'll see storage that is attached to PVE01. That would be local and local-lvm. Local is currently about 100 gigabytes, and local-lvm is currently about 375 gigabytes. What we're going to do is delete local-lvm and then add that space to local. So if we go back up to our data center here, go to storage, we'll find local-lvm, and then we want to remove it. Select yes. So now local LVM will no longer show up under PVE01 storage. Now to finish configuring the storage, we'll need to execute a few commands in the shell. To do that, go to PVE01 and then go to shell. I'll be sure to add the commands that I'm about to use down in the description. First, we're going to put LV remove slash dev slash PVE slash data. Hit Y for yes. So now we're going to use LV resize dash L plus 100 percent free all caps slash dev slash PVE slash root. So we're going to do one more command that will be resize 2fs slash dev slash mapper slash pve dash root. And we're finished configuring the storage. Once we go back to local, we'll see here that the entire drive is now available. We can check that again in the summary of pve01 under hard drive space. Now we need to make sure that we're able to store all types of data on our local storage. So we'll go to Data Center, Storage, Find Local, go to Edit, and then under Content, we need to make sure that everything is selected, and then hit OK. All right, so now we have our Proxmox node configured, and we're ready to start building our lab. In the next part of the series, we're going to go over configuring and installing virtual machines and containers on our server. So, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, or if you run into any issues, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.